welcome back to the channel everyone. We're over here at Jeff's shop giving you guys what you've been asking for. An update on the race buggy. Let's check it out. Little sweet plow jeep. Little V8. This thing is sharp and it's actually in really good shape. Town of leather interior V8. It nearly does it as plow yard with it. Cool. So I'll just working on the rear gears, setting them up. I'm gonna give you guys a lowdown of what's happening in the front. He's changed a whole bunch of stuff. The old Chevy Kingpin C's have been cut off. These Kingpins were loose, crazy. It's got the Ford Super Duty C's welded on, reed knuckles, busted knuckle high steer arms, and he's also re-drilled for the Chevy bolt pattern. It's just got a lot of finishing welding to do up front here. 410 gears. Have been swapped out it was 373s it is now 410s and hopefully by the end of the day we're going to be measuring for some 40 spline axle shafts ball joint eliminators this thing is set up to handle and what it's going to handle is these monster 47 inch utv boggers these things are absolutely ridiculous you can fit your whole fist through the center of these things. Absolutely big monster tires. Can't wait to see what they do in the mud. Setting up the rear. One of the things that we had to adjust when we adjusted the whole front end is you had to find the tire, the center of the tie rod and make your adjustments for the ram because we've got more steering angle than we did before. So now, if you ever wanted to know what a PSC Ram looks like taken apart. This is it. This is the piston that sits in the middle. These are the spacers that go in here. So he had to take 5 sixteenths off of each spacer, which is going to give him over 6 inches of ram travel. It is an 8 inch ram, but it's limited down to 6, what was it Jeff? 6 and, six and, an, eighth. Six and an eighth for steering. Gives us the best angles and without overdoing the 1550 u joints you'll be getting up to 35 degrees of steering angle the 1550 u joints that he's going to be running are these massive brannock racing 1550s lots of good parts in here 40 spline lockouts lots of good stuff so another big change this year is full skins he's done aluminum paneling and all this tubing that you're seeing on top here, this has all been changed so that we can accommodate for a roof. In the racing series, they require a roof. Now on this side, there, there was some uh, a lot of tube damage here. This tube was all smashed in pretty good from the last owner. So Jeff's been busy taking this all apart, slugged it, welded it. He's waiting on some more tube to finish this section and uh, the ribbing across here. And then uh, we can work on getting some panels in there and finishing up this roof. It's gonna, it's gonna look a lot better. A lot more headroom. A lot more headroom. That was the key part. So the rear is going to a full rear steer. Uh, it's got the Ford. C's already on. It's waiting for the knuckles and uh, everything from bust the knuckle. Setting up the four tens in the rear currently. It's got to do an axle truss, link mounts, and shock mounts, coilover mounts for the rear still. Lots of stuff to do. Inside, you can see he's got the rear steer solenoid mounted, plumbed, all new hydraulic hoses. On the dash here we've got uh, new paneling, new wiring, new switches, 
this is the original shifter, but new cable. And you can see over here is the rear steer handle with this rear steer button. So we're super excited to try that out. So powering this beast is the uh, fairly stock six liter. It does have a cam in it. Uh, it runs great, strong in motor. So that's not gonna change much, but before the final assembly, the motor will be taken out, the tranny will be taken out, everything will get resealed and uh, ready to race next season. Also has the SCS case, which we don't actually know the gearing in yet, but we're excited to pull that out and see what, what the gearing is. They are quick change gears, so if we need to, we can easily change out gearing for the 47 inch tires because they are gonna be needing a little bit lower gearing. It's also why he's going with the 410s in the front. Hopefully that'll take care of it. All new wiring. The wiring is going to look really good when it's done. She's still really dirty in here right now. But uh, once it's taken apart, cleaned, it'll be going south for sandblasting the frame. Sandblast and powder coat. Sandblast and powder coat. And in-house we'll be doing a whole bunch of powder coating. We're going to check out Jeff's powder coating system later on in another video. But it is pretty sweet. For these parts that he's got laid out here are all going to be powder coated. Should we tell him what color? Uh, maybe keep it a secret. We're going to keep it a secret for now. Stay tuned, follow the build, find out the colors at the end, but it is going to look sharp. Yeah, no, don't, don't mind me. I'm just in the way. <laughs> I didn't even bring any beer today. What the fuck, eh? What a guy. Oh, don't mind this little willy. He's just sitting here in the collecting dust in the corner. Oh, yeah, here's the coilovers in the back. I totally forgot about these. These will be sandblasted as well. And the floor pans are there too. And painted. And the floor pans. We're going to be uh, stripping those hopefully later today. Getting all this uh, box liner off the top of there. And uh, get them powder coated as well. Just degreasing some panels. All right. Now that we got the four pans all washed up and degreased, we're gonna put some paint stripper on them and get this bed liner off. We'll be using this furniture stripper to get all that uh, bed liner off. After a couple coats of paint stripper, got her all stripped down. Got one more to go. Let's keep going. Kind of a thin pattern, thin paint. But it spread nicely from the root to the end, nice even. I tried bringing the pinion in to bring it down to more of the toe, but it didn't go. Then up here we got a nice full width. Watch me drop it on the floor. <laughs> That'll make for a good video anyway. They're not, they're not lightweight, are they? So we got where the splines are marked for the axle shafts, measuring for the custom axle shafts. Yeah, this is all going together so we can eventually measure for the 40 spline axle shafts that are going to go in here. There's this cap on this side, so the rounded side's out. Might need you to, I don't know. I'll see if I can handle it. You good? You got your, use your muscles. Don't drop it. Just oh, nice. like that. Just like that. Okay, get the backlash where he wants. It's a little tight right now, so we need to move the Ring gear away from the pinion. That's probably two or three thou. We'll go a 
little bit more. That's probably five or six. Tighten that down there. Just a little dial indicator on. Over to this side. Exactly what I said, five or six, five and a half. Spec is six to ten. Go tighter. But there's the coast side that you should always look at for used gears, never mind the drive side. And maybe just a touch deep, you can tell by the half moon kind of shape at the end there, but nice even pattern all the way down. And if you look at the non-painted teeth, we're not falling off the top of the tooth that large paint stripe. Yep. You don't want it off the top, so all the pattern is concentrated in the gear too. Please. They're gonna break anyways. Eventually. Yeah. <coughs> Cause you gotta eat those meats. Gears all finished. The gifts are almost done. Let's measure for some shafts now. Shafts. East Coast gear supply once for a custom axle shaft. So U-joint center seal surface, spline area. So we got the knuckles installed with the outer stub shaft. So that we know that's where the center of the U-joint's gonna be. Wheels are straight. This spool, I marked the start of the splines right there. And they go inboard two inches this way. Then they end for about a quarter inch. And then they start the splines for the other side. So right now we got the outers in, we got the spool, we know where the splines are. So we gotta measure these measurements. So we'll measure that A first. And that is the total length of the shaft. Yeah. Right on the center. Eyeball it to here. So now the seal on these 14 volt steer axles get moved to the spanners. So we would have to measure from the end of the axle shaft, the end of the splines, to the start of the seal surface. So we'll, first we'll measure right to the seal surface. is five inches two inches a spline because we measured from the u-joint center we measured to where the splines start on this spool it's two inches of splines so if we did 37 and a half to there mm -hmm. add two inches for the length of the splines 39 and a half mm -hmm. that would get us right to the end of the spline of the spool from there to the middle of the seal was five inches, so if we start the seal at four and we end the seal surface at six, that'd be two inches of seal riding area. So and uh, East Coast Gear Supply, we're gonna call on you to uh, honor this year price for shafts. <laughs> <laughs> right on. So we got that side measured up, gotta measure the other side. Gotta still measure two shafts for the rear. Uh, we might have to move these knuckles to the rear so that we can get everything lined up over there. All right, so we move one of the knuckles over to the rear so that Jeff can measure up for his rear shafts. This is what it looks like it's going to look like when the rear steer is on. This thing is going to look crazy. So the furniture stripper did good. Got that one all stripped up. Get that one done soon. This is all the paint strip stuff. 
Jeff's got his shafts measured up. Gonna order those ASAP. It's a great day working in the shop with a buddy. We got some stuff done. Uh, guys, catch you next weekend.